Hello guys, welcome to Mind Magics and in this special session our trainer will explain everything you need to know about the Spring Boot. Before beginning the session, let's look at the topics you will cover in this video. We shall start with SOAP Web Services with Spring Boot. And we will continue with SOAP Web Services Overview. Difference between REST versus SOAP. And we will end this session with Hands-on Spring Boot SOAP Web Service. Please check the caption to jump between the topics. If you are new to the Mind Magics channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get quick updates about the new tech tutorials, free webinars, and career-enhancing shorts from working professionals. Like and share the video. Without any further delay, let's start the video. Let's begin the first one that is what exactly SOAP? A SOAP is basically uh, one simple XML based protocol. Okay. SOAP is an XML based protocol for accessing web services over HTTP. So it has some specification which could be used across all the applications. Okay. But the thing is, uh, before going to talk about more about SOAP, first of all, we need to focus on one thing that is, generally what happened in today's IT world, there is a huge number of applications which are built on different programming languages. Am I right or not? For example, there could be a web application that is designed in Java, Another one is designed on .NET and another one is designed in PHP. Then if I want to exchange data between application, then it's a crucial in today's network world. Am I right or not? But data exchange between these heterogeneous applications would be complex. So will be the complexity of the code to accomplish this data exchange one of the methods used to combat this complexity is to use the XML, I mean, extensible markup language. So this XML as the intermediate language for exchanging data between applications. Every programming language can understand the XML markup language, am I right or not? Hence, XML was used as the underlying medium for data exchange. But there are no standards of specification on use of XML across all programming languages for data exchange. That's the reason where SOAP software comes in. Are you getting my point? Okay. SOAP was designed to work with XML over HTTP and have some sort of specification which could be used across all applications. Okay, so the biggest advantage of the SOAP web service is its own security. So SOAP simply stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP provides an envelope to send a web service message over the internet using the HTTP protocol. So these messages are generally in the form of XML. So in simple words, SOAP is simple one technique to send an XML request over the internet using HTTP protocol. And in return, we are getting XML as a response. That is the main agenda of SOAP. So there are many advantages as part of, uh, I mean, uh, SOAP. SOAP is the protocol that is used for data interchange between applications, okay? For example, when we are developing a SOAP, I mean SOAP-based web services, you need to have some of language which can be used for web service that is going to talk with the client application. SOAP is the perfect medium which was developed in order, uh, which is developed in order to achieve this purpose. So this protocol is also recommended by the W3C consortium, which is the governing body of all web standards, am I right? And one more point is SOAP is a lightweight protocol 
that is used for data interchange between application. Here, like uh, a simple meaning is SOAP programming is based on XML language, which itself is a lightweight data interchange uh, language. So hence SOAP as a protocol that also falls in the same category. SOAP is designed to, I mean, uh, to be a platform independent and is also designed to be operating system independent. So SOAP protocol can work on any programming language, based program, uh, based applications that may be on uh, Windows or Linux actually, okay? It works on the HTTP protocol SOAP works on the HTTP protocol. This is the default protocol used by all web application. Hence, there is no sort of customization which is required to run the web services that is built on SOAP protocol to work on the worldwide web. So this is the story behind the SOAP. So that's the reason most of the people who are trying to implement the uh, web services, especially for uh, data interchange in between the application. We are going to implement some kind of services with the help of SOAP we can implement, okay? So when it comes to SOAP, what are the exact building blocks? The SOAP specification defines uh, something that is known as SOAP message. So which is what is sent to the web service and the client application. Okay, so can you please observe this diagram here? This is the uh, some building blocks of SOAP. Uh, the first one is SOAP envelope, header, uh, header block, as well as uh, body block. Okay, and after that, uh, WSDL, uh, web services description language, and we can able to send it through the HTTP protocol. Okay. So here an envelope element that identifies the XML document as a SOAP message. So this is the containing part of the SOAP message and is used to encapsulate all the details in the SOAP message. So this is the root element in the SOAP message, right? And the second point is header. Second block is header, right? A header element that contains header information. The header element can contain information such as authentication credentials, which can be used by the calling application. It can also contain the definition of complex types, uh, I mean to say, which could be used in the uh, SOAP message. By default, the SOAP message can contain parameters which could be of simple types, uh, such as string, numbers, but can also be co complex object type also actually. Okay. Suppose we want to send a structured data type, which had a combination of a, any course name, okay? Any course description, then we would define the complex type, uh, like for example, uh, we just need to prepare some tag actually that is XSD. I mean, we need to design the schema, XML schema definition, uh, XSD complex type with all of the required elements of the structure along with their respective data type that are defined in the complex type collection. For example, uh, XSD complex type, XSD sequence, XSD element, uh, element name is course name, the type is string, XSD element, name is course description, type is string, just like that we need to decide, okay? And the next one is body block actually. What exactly body block? A body element that contains call and response information. So this element is what contains the actual data uh, which needs to be sent between the web service and the calling application. So, um, I mean to say, if, uh, the, I mean, the body information, we can able to pass some uh, information related to your course and related to your course description, something, okay? And one more part, uh, so uh, message structure. 
So here, one thing is note is that SOAP messages are normally auto-generated by the web service when it is called actually. Whenever a client application calls a method in the web service, the web service will automatically generate a SOAP message, which will have the necessary details of the data, which will be sent from the web service to the client application. Okay. And uh, that's all about um, messaging building block. Uh, so this WSDL will help you to generate the things, okay, of all the um, XSD, okay. And one more thing is actually when we are trying to get the response, uh, there may be, if you are uh, getting the information properly, uh, it's a successful indication. Otherwise, generally we are going to get some uh, a fault code actually. So what is mean by fault message that when a request is made to a SOAP web service, the response return can be either two forms, which are a successful response or an error response. When a success is generated, the response from the server will always be a SOAP message. But if SOAP faults are generated, they are returned as 500 errors actually. The SOAP fault message consists of following element uh, like uh, fault code as well as uh, fault string, fault actor, okay, uh, detail, all these things. When we uh, when if we get some error message, okay, so that is the story about uh, SOAP building blocks. And after that, one more important point that is, what is the difference between REST and SOAP? To be frank, at present, to implement web services, most of the companies are using REST, okay? Uh, even though it depends on your requirement, you can able to work with SOAP also. But REST is not a protocol, actually. It, it, it's a style of software architecture. But SOAP is a protocol, so which contains set of standards. A REST stands for Representational State Transfer. SOAP stands for simple object access protocol, okay? REST can use SOAP because it is a concept and can use any protocol like HTTP SOAP, right? Because REST is basically one simple architecture that you can able to use any protocol, like uh, you can able to use the SOAP actually, okay? Or you can able to use HTTP. SOAP cannot use REST action because so itself a protocol, but REST is an architecture style. REST uses URI to expose business logic, but as REST works on the basics, uh, basics of type HTTP request, and some URI can work for more than a single type of operation. Okay, so REST is basically works with the help of some uh, URI expose the business logic that we are going to send some different, different endpoints that we are trying to get some different, different output, right? Uh, all we are trying to send the request with the help of one simple protocol that is HTTP, okay? So uses the service interface to expose business logic. But here we are not going, I mean, we are going to write the service interface and as part of SOAP to expose business logic. But these are some differences between REST and so. And here I'm going to implement one simple Spring Boot SOAP web service application, hands on Spring Boot SOAP web service. I love you for this procedure actually, you need to follow around 13 steps. The first step is we need to create one simple project structure, okay, uh, with the help of Spring Tool Suite, STS with required dependencies. As part of my application development uh, here, I'm going to use uh, web services is one dependency and data JPA, I mean, because I'm going to communicate with the database, right? So for that one more dependency, either you can use H2 in memory database or any other, uh, other than in memory database, that is either MySQL or R3, okay? And here I'm, my intention is I'm just going to use uh, MySQL uh, database. So these are the three required dependencies for me, okay? And 
Second step is we need to add database properties in application dot properties file. Like what exact database username you are using, password, URL, all this information you need to specify here actually. Okay. And in the same way, um, tab three is we need to create one simple XSD uh, with the name employees.xsd under SRC main resources folder. And after generating XSD, we need to add some dependencies as part of uh, some web services description language. One is we need to add WSDL 4J dependency. And other one is JAX V2 Maven plugin. I mean, we need to add this plugin actually to generate Java sources classes from XSD. I mean to say, you don't need to generate Java source classes so that will be generated based on your XSD. Okay, so here JAXB is nothing but Java XML. I mean, Java application to XML binding. XSD we are going to implement with the help of uh, XSD, XML schema definition. Based on that, the required Java uh, classes are going to implement automatically. Okay. Step number five, uh, you just need to right click on the project. And once you added the dependency as well as plugins, you need to right click on your project and you need to clear the Maven. And step number six is better to update your project. Okay, I mean, better to install the required uh, dependencies. And here, uh, when we update it, then the Java classes will be generated automatically under the target generated sources JAXB source folder. So this JAXB source folder location, we are going to specify in the XSD file, okay? I will show you all the things practically. And step number seven is you need to create one simple employee entity, I mean, model class. And you need to create a repository uh, to perform different, different CRUD operations. And step number nine is you need to create one simple service interface and service implementation, okay? So here we're going to uh, write the implementation of uh, all your CRUD operations, okay? And step number 10 is you need to create one simple web service configuration file, okay? Um, and after that, step number 11, you need to create one simple web service endpoint. And step number 12 is you need to run your Spring Boot application. Step number 13 is you need to publish uh, web services description language uh, with some port number, I mean, with some address URL like HTTP localhost 8080 employees dot WSDL, I mean, web services description language. So after publishing this one, I mean, you need to, uh, if you want to check all your so web services are working properly or not, you need to work with SOAP UI tool that you need to download, okay? So after downloading, uh, you need to check whether each and every service is working properly or not. And here you need to remember one point that here you are going to send the request in the form of XML and you can get response in the form of XML, okay? So that's all about uh, Spring Boot SOAP web services, okay? So now, I'm going to implement it practically so that you will get better idea, okay? So let's begin. As we already told you to implement Spring project, Spring Boot project, we need to take the support of uh, STS tool. The full form is Spring tool suit. Here I'm going to create a project with the name Spring starter, I mean, one simple spring starter project, okay? Uh, with the name, spring, okay, spring boot, so, all right. Uh, I mean to say, um, I'm just going to implement some applications, okay? Uh, with the name, okay, uh, with the name, or otherwise, Give this name as Spring Boot Soap Web Service. Okay, 
web service demo. And here I'm just going to select the Java version is eight. Uh, and packaging is jar type and language, language is Java, okay? And the group name is, I'm just going to pass it as com dot spring boot soap. And artificate is here. I'm trying to implement Spring Boot Soap web service demo application. And description is Spring Boot Soap demo, okay? Web service demo. And the package is form dot Spring Boot uh, Soap. Perfect. So we need to pass all this metadata information. After that, just click on next button. So here, the second step is you need to add the required dependency. The first dependency is SOAP web services. So this is the required web service dependency. And one more required dependency is uh, JPA dependency. So just add this thing, data JPA dependency. And third step is we need to add uh, my SQL driver okay, this dependency these are the three required dependencies so just click on next and after that click on finish button right so can you please observe a bottom of your sts id screen so here you can able to find out the uh, percentage that the project is going to deploy i mean to say a building okay so here the project is created successfully with the proper prototype, okay? And here SRC main Java is there, SRC main resources is there, SRC test Java is there, okay? For writing some test cases. And here uh, form.xml is there with uh, three dependencies, but one more dependency will come automatically. The dependency name is spring boot starter test dependency, right? Okay, and now, what we need to do as part of third step, actually, okay? As part of third step, uh, we need to add one more dependency, okay? Uh, before that, actually, the third step is we need to create one simple XSD file in resources with the name uh, file employees.xsd. SD. Just click on finish button. See here. So this is the XSD form look like. Okay. Here we need to pass the information, but just choose source option. Okay. So here to implement this one, I already implemented the code. Okay. Otherwise, it will take a lot of time to implement that one, right? Because we need to implement a lot of things. That's the reason to uh, reduce the time. Um, I already prepared the XSD. I'm just going to take the support of that one. Okay, web service. Yeah, this is the employees.xsd. And I'm just going to copy, uh, better to copy all the code and just paste here. So this one. Can you please observe here what exactly it contains? As I already told you, XSD is nothing but whatever your requirement is there, whatever your entity is there, you need to specify the things with the help of XSD, XML schema definition. We need to create the schema like this action. So here my requirement is XML naming space, uh, target namespace is, I mean, whatever the Java, target Java classes are created automatically with the help of this XSD, those are going to store into com dot spring boot rest, okay, com dot Spring Boot, uh, sorry, here the package name is not SRC main Java. Can you please check it? Com dot Spring Boot Soap, not rest, right? So that's the reason I'm just trying to change it as Spring Boot Soap, all APOs. So this target namespace will help you in many cases as part of creating uh, endpoint, uh, web service configuration, all these things actually. So that's the reason just copy this one, okay, copy this one. And here also spring boot, so. So this all APIs folder indicate that it is going to create uh, all APIs folder and all your target classes are going to create in that folder, okay. 
So can you please observe here? The, we need to create some uh, structure, right? So X is complex type, name is employee information. So X is sequence. So as part of employee, I need employee ID, name, department, and uh, phone number, address. And the type is employee ID is long type, name is string type, department is string type, and phone number is string type, address also string type, okay? And when it comes to specify one by one value, the service status, uh, that is service status is, uh, name is status and that is into string type. And the, the message is also string type actually. We need to specify the status. And after that, uh, we are going to work on CRUD operations. Like we are going to add employee request. We are going to uh, get employee response, okay? Uh, for this point, first of all, we need to add employee request, right? So to add this employee request, we are just trying to add it as access element. Name is employee information. That is the type is target namespace employee info. Okay. And add employee response. So the response should be uh, like service status. That is status as well as message actually. Okay. And when it comes to services, first of all, we need to get employee request get employee by ID request and get employee response. So if you are trying to pass the employee ID, based on that, we need to get response. If you are trying to update employee request, based on that, we need to update employee request. If you are trying to delete the employee response, based on that, we need to delete the employee response. And this employee information is used to, okay, for adding, adding employee information, okay, adding employee request adding employee response. Perfect, right? So after generating this XSD as a third step, the fourth step is we need to add one dependency and one plugin in our form.xml file. Then only we can able to generate the target Java classes automatically, okay? So that's the reason I'm just going to uh, add the dependencies, okay, like that. So that's just open form.xml. And I already implemented uh, the required dependencies in form.xml. Just get the support from, I mean, reference from there. So one required dependency for is this, this one, WSDL4J, I mean, web services description language, okay? So better to add this dependency anywhere. Okay, just save the program. Pop it. See there, it is building, so it's, completely, but not a problem. So along with this, we need to add one plugin, right? So to add that plugin information, I already implemented the required code for that. Here I'm going to add that one. So plugin group IDs for, from org.codehash.mozo. The plugin name is Jax B2 Maven plugin. Okay. And copy this plugin information and just paste here. Okay, save this one actually. Perfect. Right? So here's building is 66 percent is complete. But still, yeah, see there, oh, it's created because it's automatically built it, right? So see there, the target classes, uh, all the target Java classes are created automatically. Whatever the information is there in XSD, like add employee request, add employee response, delete point of view, employee information point of view, get employee by ID point of view. Okay, uh, some object factory, package info, service status, update point of view, every class is generated automatically. So even though better to uh, check it one more time, but just clean the maven, okay. See here, build is success. Again, we need to right click on the application. So then as we need to install all the dependencies, maven install and check the console here. Some error is there. We need to check. So run as Maven clean. Better to increase this. Uh, 
up to that run as maven install. Okay, because uh, it is trying to get some data source information because we are not added all the properties, right? So we'll, we'll focus on that. Okay. So now the fourth step is, uh, sorry, four steps are completed successfully. And now the fifth step is uh, we need to write the proper information into application guard properties. So like database information, as well as uh, any logging services, okay. Uh, sorry, here, what my intention is, I just want to generate some logging services also. That's the reason I added one more dependency. Forget to add that dependency. The dependency name is, uh, better to add this entire form.xml instead of adding one by one. So this one. Okay. Yeah. See there. This is the starter AOP, and along with us, one is Java X dot XML uh, bind point of view. Okay. Jack's been with this. So I'm just going to uh, add the next step is we'll, we'll focus on the uh, dependencies. Uh, Maven clean and Maven install again, actually. But before that, I'm just going to add the required properties as part of application dot properties. Okay. So uh, I already created the required properties. So we just need to open application dot properties and just control A, control C. And I'm just going to add here what my intention is. I just want to check the port number with 2026. And this is the login. Uh, AOP services that is logging dot level dot org spring framework information. Okay. Uh, some in case if you get it there, root is error point of view. Okay. So this is required. You can able to maintain otherwise, you can do it. Connection timeout as well as maximum pool size. Okay. And after that, here I'm going to add spring dot data source dot URL that is employee. Uh, here the database name is demo employee underscore demo username is root password is password and show sql is true and hibernate ddl operation is in case if it is already there uh, add it otherwise it need to be created automatically i mean create or drop or otherwise you can able to use update or create whatever it may be. okay so i just want to uh, keep this one as create drop okay but what happened every time it is going to drop the existing one, it is going to create the new one actually, okay? And the required dialect is actually as part of my, uh, here I'm using my SQL 8 version. So that's the reason here I added my SQL 8 dialect. Everything is perfect, right? After adding all the dependencies, can you please uh, clean the Maven one time? Yeah, here build is success. You see, run as Maven install. It's unknown database EMP demo. So that's the problem when it is going to perform some tests. Okay. I'm just going to create the database properly. Okay. So by just working with my SQL, I mean my SQL workbench 8.8 .8 version. Okay. So here the password is password and my machine. And I'm just going to create database with the name employee demo. Yes, right. Database is created, right? Use employee underscore demo. Run it. See here. 
So now, can you please check it? Is there any tables at present? Show tables. At present, there is no tables actually, right? But it will be created automatically. Okay. So again, I'm going to. Uh, Clear it. Okay, better to install. Better to run Maven install one more time and check it whether the build is going to success. I mean, we are. I'm trying to rebuild the project. Perfect. Okay. See here, build success. At this moment, there is no problem. Everything is perfect, right? Okay. Now, so now, and one more thing. Now we need to focus on actually. So we need to create uh, and the main package. We need to create one more folder for model point of view and. One more folder, I mean, one more package for repository point of view, and one more package for service point of view. Okay, and one more folder for. Uh, service model repository and after that endpoint and one more folder for I mean one more package for configuration point of view okay and one more package for a data store point of view okay so all these are created successfully right now we'll focus one by one. So first of all, we need to create one simple entity uh, by just keeping the class name as employee. Click on finish button. Okay. So now I already implemented the code. I'm just going to add it employee.java. And here, entity name is employee. Okay. We added successfully, right? And it is showing some error. Uh, the thing is, here we use some annotations. Better to import every annotation, I mean, annotations properly. This one is entity from Java X dot persistent and table also from Java X dot persistent and serializable interface from Java dot IO package. And ID from Javax dot persistent and Javax dot persistent. So everything is imported successfully, right? So after that, we need to focus on uh, repository. Okay. So just create one simple interface because here the beauty of Spring Boot is when it comes to repository, uh, there is one uh, predefined interface. CRUD repository that will we can able to work with many required methods actually to perform different code applications, right? So just create employee repository. Click on finish button. I already implemented the code as part of employee repository. So just I'm trying to copy that one and paste here. See here, very simple. Public interface employee repository extends from third repository, and the entity name is employee and ID type is long type. Okay, so we need to work with uh, one simple annotation, stereotype annotation that is repository, and we need to get uh, the employee photo class. Okay, perfect, right? So after this one, uh, I'm just trying to, to be frank, this is not required even to keep it in the comments, so not a problem. 
because here I'm not going to write anything, right? So now I'm going to take the support of service. So in as part of service, I'm going to create interface. The name is employee service. Click on finish button. So I already implemented all the uh, required methods for performing different different code operations. Okay, so just copy this one and paste here, save here. So now import it. Right, perfect. Right. So four methods. One is add point of view. One is get employee information by ID, update employee, and delete employee. That's it. Okay. Only four services I need. Four services. Perfect, right? And after that, to implement these services properly by writing uh, implementation code, I'm just going to create one simple class. The class name is employee service implementation. Okay. Just click on finish button. So for this one also, I already implemented the required code. Okay, so as part of employee service implementation, so I'm just going to copy paste. Okay, so just copy and paste here. So here, what you need to do, you need to import the required annotations. Okay, so the first one is uh, to inform this as a service. We need to work with stereotype annotation, and uh, we already added all the and implement. I mean uh, methods. We don't need to add it one more time. Just import uh, one simple annotation that is auto wide annotations and uh, employee repository annotation and POSO class. I mean, model entity class. Uh, add employee, update employee, delete employee, right? So find employee by ID. Uh, so here we are trying to call, okay, because this method will help you uh, to call this method actually, okay? So I'm just going to save this one. So now check it in employee service implementation. I tried in, I mean, this way to call this method, okay? Because based on the ID, we need to represent all the employee information, right? So that's the reason I'm trying to call directly the method, find employee by ID method, okay? So there, in the repository, we already mentioned it actually, uh, with the help of long employee ID, it is going to get it actually, okay? So employee service and employee service implementation, okay? Uh, everything is perfect, right? Yeah. So now, uh, one more thing, after implementing the service part, service implementation also completed, now we need to focus on uh, end point actually, okay? So I'm just going to implement end point with the name employee end point, okay? I already implemented uh, the required stuff. Employee end point, okay? So I'm just going to add this annotation and everything. Just copy it. And this is the required one actually. So it is showing a lot of errors, right? Don't worry. So we just need to import each and every annotation properly. Okay, the first one is endpoint annotation. And here, uh, employee, oh, sorry, what happened? Employee endpoint. No, rename this class name as employee endpoint. Please the capture one actually. Okay. And after that, auto wide annotation. And here we are going to auto wide with employee service. Okay. Here you need to identify one point that is here we are trying to get all the information, the namespace URL. As I already told you at the time of creating XSD. Okay. There, uh, XSD will help you and to. Uh, work with endpoints as well as message uh, service configuration, right? So here, only differences, I mean, only new thing is actually here, we just need to add spring boot soap dot all APIs. That's it, okay? And after that, uh, we just need to import it as well as uh, we need to add payload, import it, and this annotation also, 
and the service status also and request payload and employee entity and bean utils and bean package and as part of get also same thing first we need to import uh, get employee request and the get employee request all these classes are generated automatically by right? the target java classes okay and here update point of view also same thing and here also date and as delete point of view all the same thing actually okay. we need to import delete employee response everything perfect right so this one so here uh, the first point is actually how to uh, add employee information okay employee information with the help of uh, as xml request and we can get xml as a response whether uh, the service is successfully executed or not for that we just need to work with one simple annotation that is payload root i mean where you are trying to pass it the namespace you are is very important and after that the local part is and uh, the name like add employee request okay and response payload what we are expecting actually when we are adding this employee request information so then it is going to create object for that target class that is add employee response okay along with the service status actually so if it is successfully executed we are going to get it 200 as the response status code okay and uh, every information we are going trying to get it into the employee type okay so uh, here body it is dot copy properties like request dot get employee info and nothing but will get every information okay uh, along with the object so employee service dot add employee of employee in case it is success then it is going to show the information that the status information that is success and content added successfully and uh, set service state we need to re uh, return the uh, response actually okay. Same thing, we need to pass it in the as part of get point of view, as part of update, as part of delete, all these things actually. Okay. Based on the requirement, you need to pass the payload route and response payload actually. Okay. Response payload. And everything you need to take the support of service actually, because we already implemented uh, code there, right? So we already auto configured here. Okay. So now, uh, yeah, perfect. This one also, endpoint also perfect. And up to that, actually, we need to focus on how to implement the uh, config. Okay, so just new class. Okay, so what is the name of this class? Actually, here we are going to configure web service. Okay, web service configuration. Okay, so here I'm just going to keep the user defined name as web service configuration. Okay. Click on finish button. So I already implemented actually. So this web service configuration, we need to be extend from one of the predefined class that is double uh, I mean, web service configurer adapter. Okay, configurer adapter. So I'm just going to add all this code. Here, paste here. Here we just need to import the annotations one by one. So that is first one is enable web service. And after that configuration, and after that uh, configuration adapter class, and after that servlet uh, registration bean, okay, and org.mframework.context and bean annotation and server to the station B and message. This is very important. Message dispatcher server that. Okay. And after that, XLD schema and default uh, web services 
definition of it, all these things. But here, uh, one thing, as I already told you here, also you need to specify what happens. It's a D schema, right? We need to import this one and class path resource also from Spring Framework. Perfect, right? So here, um, what is the XSD name? So that we implemented employees dot XSD. Okay, so here to be fun, this is not employee, but to keep it as. Uh, refactor and rename it as employee dot perfect okay employee dot perfect okay we implemented the service configuration also so in the service configuration what the thing is as you already told you uh, this is the point I mean global path that is all service okay so from here it is going to call one by one service okay. So here we need to specify the uh, namespace URI with the name com dot spring boot soap dot all APIs. Don't confuse it. It's just a path actually. Okay, it's just a path. And after this, uh, I hope we implemented each and every information actually, but except one thing, that is uh, service or its implementation endpoint data store. Okay, data store setup. Okay, so I'm just going to create one simple class as part of data store setup point of view. So in the so config as well as yeah data store. Here I'm just going to create one new class, and the class name is data store setup. Okay, just click on finish button. So we already implemented the code for this. Just add this information here. So import it one by one. The first one is we have configure and enable responses, spring boot soap dot repository. Okay. And component scan from spring boot soap. And entity scan from com dot spring boot soap dot model and value annotation as well as bean annotation okay. and data source annotation. I think so. This is Java X dot SQL and driver manager data source with all the information. Perfect, right? That's it about the data store point. We implemented each and every information properly, right? So now what we need to do is uh, I'm going to run this application. As I already told you, it's even it's a web service application. Uh, we can able to run it as a regular Java application, right? So just run as uh, Java application and check it. See here, here the Tomcat port number is started with the port number 2026, right? So first, I mean, in the next step is actually, we need to work with uh, local host 2026, okay, 2026 slash. So here we need to work with all service employees dot double SGS, okay? Double SGS, or it is employee dot double SGS. 
employees.wsdm. Okay, perfect. No issue. Can you please check it? What is the file name? Do it be part here. Employee.java. Employee.wsd. Okay, fine. Yeah, employees.wsd, right? So we generated web services description language. So this is the proper access key schema, right? Okay, with all the information. So now what we need to do is just copy this one. So we, we publish it like this, right? So if you want to check the web services, all the cloud operations of SOAP service, we need to work with SOAP UI. So this is the new version that is 5.7.0. Just open this SOAP UI. Like same as a Postman. The, like, I mean, we already uh, worked with Postman at the time of working with the rest of services, right? And here also same thing. So now what we need to do is, so we need to click on SOAP and what is the initial WSDL that we need to paste here. So the name will come automatically and just click on OK button. See here. So it is going to generate all the services actually. So one is add employee, delete employee, get employee, get employee by ID, update employee. So at present get employee is not there. Only four services we focus main, right? So first one is add employee point of view. So when we click on request actually, okay? See here, here uh, this is for trying, uh, which is used to send the response. And here we can able to get the response, whether the data is inserted successfully or not. So first what we need to send employee ID information, that is one double zero one employee name, uh, like some Mohan and employee department that is IT department, employee phone number that is some mobile number. Okay. And employee address. So that is Hyderabad. Okay. What I'm trying to do is better to clear this console because we need to check it whether it is working properly or not. So just click on this run button actually. Okay. Yes, see there. But it is giving the information in some uh, raw type. So better to click on this option XML so you can able to see content added successfully. So the meaning is. So whatever information you are trying to send the employee information that is added successfully to the employee table actually. Okay, can you please check it? So for that, open the MySQL uh, workbench, MySQL workbench, show tables. At present, one table is created with the name employee. Okay, so now select start from employee. See there, 1001 Hyderabad IT department, Mohan, and the mobile number. Just like this, all of you, you can able to check uh, remaining services also. Like if you want to get uh, employee, any employee information, like at present, only one employee is there, right? So I'm just trying to pass 1001 is the employee ID, okay? And better to prove XML as the response and try to run it. XML type. Can you please observe here? This is the information of that. 1001 Mohan IT department, mobile number, and Hyderabad is address. We try to send the information in XML type. We can get the information, I mean, output response in the form of XML. Okay. And if you want to update the details, then just click on this request and you need to pass uh, the information like. So at employee ID 1001, I just want to change his na name as so Mohan Krishna, okay? And department is uh, IT, yes. And phone number is some phone number and address is at the bottom, okay? I'm just trying to Submit this response. Okay. Uh, at that moment, you will going to update the information. Excellent. See there? Content updated successfully. So can you please check in the database? So we start from employees. 
see here Hyderabad, ITS, Mohan Krishna, and the number is also different. Just like this, you can able to delete the request also. Okay. Uh, let us close this existing screen. Yeah. If you want to delete it, so just open the service, just click on request. And here I'm just trying to pass the employee ID that is one double zero one. Okay. So just click on this. So click on Excel. Can you please observe here? Content deleted successfully. And the status message is success. Can you please check it? Whether it is deleted or not. So let's start from employee. See there, now there is no information actually. This is the way to work so based web services using Spring Boot actually. At present, this one is the legacy one actually, because when it comes to XML, JSON is the best one. So that's the reason most of the companies are working with uh, to create web services. Generally, they are going to take the support of REST actually, REST architecture, okay? I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll meet in the next video, okay? Thank you.